Let's look at the second strand of argument that I mentioned, wanting to talk about. Um, the idea that it's in our interest to be rational. This has a long philosophical pedigree. You can go right back to the beginnings of Western philosophy, the works of Plato, for example. Perhaps his most famous work is The Republic, in which Socrates, the leading character who represents Plato's views, engages in an, in an argument about why it's in your interests to act justly. So the conclusion really is that the, the just man, the just person, is happier than the unjust, has a properly ordered soul, as Plato puts it, and uh, is, ends up being happier. Well, um, it's a question that is obviously still around. Uh, I don't think many people find the arguments that Plato put forward uh, really convincing. Um, but we do now have some evidence, some social science research about links between happiness and uh, ethics or various things that are part of an ethical life. And uh, perhaps we can draw this connection in some ways. So, for example, um, there's been, there have been studies showing that people who are generous uh, tend to be happier with their life, tend to say that they're, um, that they're happier, that they're more satisfied with their life. Um, there have been even studies of people in, uh, who are having uh, images taken of their brains, um, uh, functional magnetic resonance images, uh, in circumstances where they have the opportunity to give to a charity. So they've been given some money to do as they wish with. They've been told that they can either keep it or donate it. Um, it's not that they're trying to please other people because uh, they're told that no one will actually know of any individual uh, who gave and who kept it. Um, and then they're asked to make this decision while their brains are being scanned. And uh, the results show that people who do decide to give money away have activity in what are known as the reward centres of the brain. So the reward centres of the brain are those parts that are active when we engage in other pleasurable activities, whether it's eating chocolate or having sex. It seems like the same areas of the brain are active when people give. So there's, if you like, a more direct kind of confirmation of a relationship between self-interest and ethics in that specific area. Um, so there is some evidence about that. Uh, there's also evidence, I think, that goes the other way, that uh, people who act unethically often get uh, distorted senses of priorities and end up doing things that um, make them unhappy. But um, it might be objected that there's something wrong with this entire approach to justifying ethics. So um, here's a quotation from the 19th century philosopher F.H. Bradley, um, who uh, suggests that if somebody asks us this question, we're discussing why should I be moral, um, we should not actually talk about that you'll be happier if you're virtuous. He says we should avoid all praises of the pleasantness of virtue. Even if we believe that it transcends all possible delights of vice, we degrade and prostitute virtue when to those who do not love her for herself, we bring ourselves to recommend her for the sake of her pleasures. An interesting metaphor going on here, obviously. Um, in the personification of, of virtue as somebody that we should uh, love for her own sake and not for the pleasures that she brings. Um, so, but the, you, you get the idea here. The idea is that um, to, to act ethically is to act for the sake of being ethical. But you're not acting ethically if you do it for its reward. So to take a simple example, I guess, um, you, you're walking along the beach, there's a heavy surf, um, you see somebody there out there calling for help, looks like they're going under the waves, they could drown. Um, you're an okay swimmer, so you plunge in and you pull out this person and, and rescue them. And people then come and praise you and say, uh, 
You're a hero, you risk your life in the surf in order to save a stranger. Uh, and you say, oh, I knew who it was, I knew that it was the son of a billionaire, and I'm expecting to be very generously rewarded for saving him. Um, so most people will then change their view about how virtuous you actually are. And that's the kind of thing that, um, that Bradley is getting at here. We do want to encourage people to act ethically for the sake of acting ethically, um, because, I suppose, we would like people to go out of their way to help strangers, even when they're not being uh, expecting to get a reward from it. Um, so, in a sense, Bradley's objection has a point here. Um, but we could also regard acting ethically as in our interests in a broader way, not in this way that I'm expecting to get uh, a financial incentive for uh, reward for saving this person, but rather um, I'm expecting, you know, I believe that living ethically is going to be a more rewarding life for me on the whole, a more fulfilling life for me on the whole. And if I think that in general, not about a particular case where I might choose here, will I act ethically? Oh no, that person doesn't have any money, I won't help them. Um, so, but if we think it in general, then we are still going to act ethically in, in general. We're going to develop a general disposition to act ethically. And I think if we do that because we think that we're going to have a better life in this broader sense, you could say in the sense of enlightened self-interest rather than narrow self-interest, then I don't think that it's a problem to, to recommend living ethically for the sake of that broader kind of self-interest. And certainly there's lots of cases where we can see people making bad mistakes going the other way. Um, this is Ivan Bursky, is, is an 80s Wall Street arbitrager who was dealing with companies that were being merged uh, and um, was proven to be involved in insider trading and uh, was ruined and, and went to prison for some years. He was the, um, if you've seen the, uh, the film Wall Street, um, that uh, was roughly modelled on, on Ivan Bursky. Um, now, Bursky, at the time he went into the insider trading that brought him down, already had something like 100 to $150 million. He was already a very wealthy and highly respected man. Um, so, was, it, was there really a lot of point in trying to get another 20 or 30 or $40 million from the insider trading that he engaged in? Um, this seems a classic case of losing your perspective on what's important in your life. Um, and a bit of ethics would no doubt have left Bursky still quite a wealthy person and a successful person, but not had him ruined. And of course the uh, more recent example from uh, our own era is uh, Bernie Madoff, um, who also could have been a successful uh, uh, investor or a money manager, money fund manager, um, without running the Ponzi scheme. It seems like at least at the beginning um, he was reasonably successful and he started uh, running the Ponzi scheme in order to be even more successful and to uh, maintain his position. But if he'd been somewhat more modest in his ambitions and had some ethical constraints, uh, he would no doubt not be in prison today. So this is a question that people often ask. Um, does money buy, can money buy you happiness? Um, and again, there is, there is research um, on this in a variety of ways, um, in general as well as in the specific ways that I've mentioned. So, as far as the latest research uh, seems to indicate, um, we need to distinguish between emotional well-being and life evaluation. So, um, emotional well-being refers to the quality of your life. If, if we stop and ask you at random moments, how are you feeling right now? How, 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 are you in a good mood? Have you enjoyed the last hour? Um, have you enjoyed what you've been doing in the last hour? Um, that's the kind of question that uh, gets to your emotional well-being. If we stop and say, we stop you and say, how well do you think your life has been going in recent years? That's a different question. That's the life evaluation question. It makes people stop and think and reflect over a long time period. So it gives you different answers from um, how have you enjoyed the last hour? Was, was that fun? Was that uh, stressful? Was it 
were you sad, were you positive? Um, they're different questions. And if we do draw that distinction, then it seems that the answer to the life evaluation question does relate to income, although the curve is steep at first and then gets much less steep. It used to be argued that it actually completely plateaus, but it's now, and this is research done by people at Princeton, Daniel Kahneman, Nobel Prize winning psychologist who uh, now an emeritus here, and Angus Deaton, who is a uh, professor here now. Um, they showed that, in fact, it does increase, but it increases as log income rises. So, in other words, to get the same amount of increase, you need to double your income. So, that's why it starts to, it starts to uh, rise much more slowly, and, and earlier researchers didn't really see that it was still rising, because it's not as if um, an extra $10,000 for somebody who's at 100000 brings them as much extra happiness as an extra 10000 for somebody who's at $20,000. That's, that's fairly obvious. But, but if you're at 100000 and you go to 200000 then you do get um, a, a, an additional increase in the extent to which you're satisfied with your life when somebody asks you. But you don't, beyond the 75000 level, it seems that you don't actually enjoy your life more on an hour-by-hour -hour basis. And that's an interesting distinction. And you might well think, what's more important here? Is it more important that each hour of your life goes well, or is it more important that you, when you're asked how well has your life go, uh, gone over the last few years, you think about that and you uh, give a positive answer to it? So, at least at one level, money does make some difference, but I think you could say it doesn't, beyond a certain level, roughly the 75,000 level, it doesn't make as much difference as you might think, which would have been a salutary lesson for Bursky and Madoff, because they were certainly above that level. <laughs>